Richard, how's everyone pulled up after Argentina? Clean, bit of health? Yeah, we are um, pretty good after obviously a physical contest and um, so yeah, no, we've done well on having an eight-day turnaround. So lads have had two good days of recovery, and we're in a good spot. How big a shot in the arm was that victory in terms of morale, the mood around the camp? All right, no, it was it was obviously a, a really impressive win. So they should rightly be proud of themselves, the lads, because they put an incredible amount of effort. An opening game of the World Cup comes with a lot of pressure and expectation, and they delivered. So yeah, no, they're um, they're pleased, which they should be. Has it been palpable, that, that release of pressure? Um, I don't know if it's a release of pressure because you're straight back to um, another game that you have to win um, to move forward. So um, it was nice to have the, the day, the extra day to, to you know live with that emotion a little bit longer and to get over it. But um, it was straight back to business today. And this evening is Tom Curry's hearing. How disruptive has it been not knowing if you'll be available for this weekend? Uh, no, not not really yet. Not yet. Again, probably helps with the longer turnaround. Um, so yeah, we'll await the uh, we'll await the verdict. And in terms of uh, the clash of heads, I, I know you don't want to talk obviously mm. about his hearing, but there was another clash of heads in South Africa, Scotland, which looked very similar and wasn't even penalised. Is there a need for a bit of consistency? In the so I think you appreciate that um, what I can't do is talk around this incident or any other that that may affect. Um, pre-hearing um, it is an invasion sport where you know collisions happen accidents happen it's a fast moving game with incredible athletes so um, gives you some insight to what uh, may or may not happen on the field but I appreciate lads that I can't um, I can't elaborate on, on my thoughts on our head knock or any others but is there any feeling of frustration Gary Townsend said he was you know, obviously frustrated but is there, is there a frustration when there is this lack of consistency yeah, again, can't comment on on um, our frustration or anyone else's. Okay, in terms of the plan of attack for Japan, the, the drop goal tactic worked against Argentina, but is that something you stick with or, or do you go more expansive? Oh, well, we want it as part of our armoury because obviously you've got a, a world-class kicker in George Ford and you keep the, to the scoreboard ticking over. It's obviously a massive advantage, but uh, no, there'll definitely be other things in our armoury this weekend. So are you training with footballs? What's the thinking there? <laughs> no, it was... Uh, you know, it is a little primer to get us going in terms of a bit harder to hold on to a rugby ball. So um, the forecast at the moment is that there's potential um, showers. So we're just covering bases with it's a lot harder to hold on to that ball when you're, when you're going down to ground. So you've seen a few spills, but sort of exaggerate the problem to hopefully get a good effect for the weekend. Thank you. Well, Ollie, how happier is the group after that win? How much pressure has been relieved? Um, yeah, I think as a team, we're obviously chuffed for the result. Um, but a bit like we've just said then, um, we've got another game this weekend and our focus quickly shifts onto, onto the performance of this weekend on Sunday. Um, so yeah, we were obviously happy to get our first one, um, but yeah, the attention turns to Sunday now. I appreciate, like Richard, you can't prejudice the hearing, but does there need to be a bit more consistency from a player's point of view? Do you know where the line is between what's a red, what's a yellow and what isn't at the moment? I think that's really for the refs and the governing bodies to decide. I'm not really going to comment on that. Okay, what are you expecting from Japan? Um, yeah, they like to move the ball about. Um, I think we've identified that. We started the week today, just reviewing a bit of how they're going to play. Um, we've kind of got an idea now as to as to what their threats are. Um, so yeah, we're going to kind of come up with a plan now to shut that down. Um, it's going to be exciting to see how we go throughout the week and then perform on Sunday. The last four years haven't been great for them, but they've got form, haven't they? Pedigree of upsets in World Cups. So are you very much aware of that? Yeah, definitely. I think there's obviously the history there in terms of like you said, how they've performed in World Cups and they're a very passionate team and um, and obviously when it comes to that, obviously teams turn up um, on days against teams that potentially they shouldn't shouldn't be uh, have a standing in the game. Um, so that's definitely something we've um, had a focus on and we know what we need to do to, to make sure we come out the right end of the result this weekend. Uh, Richard, is that, given that um, you know, Steve's talked about doing what you need to do, look at, you know, having, I suppose, mm -hmm. bespoke game plans for each mm -hmm. team because you know you're facing and the way the game went last weekend, is it good to sort of then have a different test with a team like Japan that you could expect to, to move the ball around so they'll test you in a different way and perhaps you have to play in a different way and, you know the two if you could sort of you know pull off the two types of game plan that would be a really good start to the tournament. Yeah absolutely they attack in a different way to many teams that you play against both uh, internationally and in the premiership so 
really good test for us in, in particularly in that part of the game with uh, seeing something different. Um, as I alluded to, lads have seen that today and seen quite excited to get their teeth into, into something different. So, yeah, on the other side of the ball, every team presents a slightly different challenge uh, with how they defend uh, and how they kick. So, yeah, we'll be ready for that uh, when it comes. And because the Argentina game was such a massive you know, occasion and, and game in the pool in terms of on paper, it'd be easy for sort of people outside to say, oh, you know, England could just roll on now through the rest of the matches, but I'm assuming that no one in the camp is no. having that attitude at all. Uh, definitely not. This is where you show um, what sort of team you are, what sort of professional you are, um, both as coaches and players, to go, you can you can sit and think, oh, that's a job well done, or you can sit and think, right, what are the many areas that we can tighten up and improve on? Uh, let's push on, um, let's keep improving, uh, let's get after it this week. We started that excellently today. And um, I said, you know, it was such a good performance of the weekend. Um, at this point, do you kind of have to balance uh, continuity with giving other um, you know, guys in the squad match minutes? Yeah, obviously one for Steve, um, but you won't want to, um, if possible, ever like make masses of wholesale changes where um, because if you're trying to keep uh, some cohesion and some thing, but yeah, one for Steve, and um, I'm sure as, as ever there'll be. There'll be some tweaks here and there, but um, yeah, we're looking to go again. And Ollie, uh, what was that experience like? Um, the the atmosphere in the stadium seemed pretty pretty crazy. I mean, it just I suppose worth a word for the England fans who it sounded like gave you that a bit bit of an extra lift at the key points in the, in the match. Yeah, no, it's huge. Obviously, it was my first of a World Cup game, um, but to experience that crowd and to have to see all the English faces and fans that we had there was um, was a massive support for us, and it's definitely something that got behind us and. Helps us push us over the line. It's not to be underestimated at this point, is it really? Because everyone knows what happened in August, but when you get to World Cup, it's a totally different feel, isn't it? But to be into it now, to have had the win, to have the feel good factor, that will give you a big boost, won't it? Yeah, definitely. I think it's just exciting for us because I think even though we got the win on the weekend, there was um, we watched it back today and reviewed it, and there's so many opportunities in that game for us to to put to get more tries and to to boost our score um, and I think that's the exciting part for us for the team is we're, ju we're just beginning this journey um, and uh, like like Wig said earlier we're looking forward to getting our, our teeth stuck into it this weekend and uh, see how far we can take it. Hi Richard, Hi, um, mate. can I ask about the presence of George Cruz at training today, what, he, what his role is, what value he adds and do you recognise him now? He seems to. He just lost a lot of weight, yeah. So he got um, he got a bit of stick uh, this morning for uh, for his weight, and he actually compared his body to mine, which, um, which for when he was 117, I think, when he played, not not the not the best compliment for him. So uh, George uh, helps with line out. So him and Steve chat for hours uh, behind closed doors, and I really don't want to listen to those conversations. So uh, they go have a proper line out nose off, and I know he helps the. The callers and uh, the, the line-up menu that they get and all that that detail that I definitely don't need to know. But um, yeah, I'm sure he's incredibly valuable. Lads have been, it's great to have him around because he's got such an affinity with so many of them. So yeah, it's been really nice to have him here for a couple of days. Uh, and, and just in terms of just how, how long is he here for and will, will he, his presence be a recurring theme? Um, I think he is due to come back, but I think, what is it to choose? I think he might be going home tomorrow. So I've seen enough of him now. Uh, it's nice to see him, but yeah, he's um, he's going back. He's got uh, his big company to go and to go and run. So he's going to be um, he's going to be jetting in and out. I think a little bit, but he's he's always on the phone and uh, speaking with Steve. Uh, and can I ask him one more? On another another former teammate, uh, Billy Lindapola. If he does come back this weekend, uh, at number eight, what, what does that do for the attack? Having an extra very prominent ball carrier, and what would that enable you as an attack coach to sort of? Yeah, what Billy does is we, he's obviously got great physical presence um, and it's great to have him back on the training field. But he's really smart, rugby player as well, puts himself in great positions, got great hands, so he's he's got more threat than just being the big ball carrier. Um, he's really smart and, and knows when to when to shift it and to give the change the point of contact for other players as well. So yeah, great for us to, to have him available. Richard, what, what side of what type of conditioning have you done with Billy to make sure he can hit the ground running on Sunday, given he won't play for a few 
Yeah, unfortunately for Billy, he's been handed over to Alex Walters, um, which was not a pleasant experience, <laughs> experience for him. So, um, yeah, he is. There's a, there's a group of lads that will pick up extra conditioning, um, lads who maybe didn't get many minutes or didn't play. Unfortunately for Billy, that's been him every every time for the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, Alex's been working him hard and uh, and he looks good to go. And when Tom Curry is available, can you just say what he gives to the team? Yeah, Tom Curry, obviously uh, world-class player, proven it time and time again. Um, really unfortunate um, what happened, but knowing Tom as we all do, when the next time he plays for England, he'll no doubt have a big impact both sides of the ball. And Ollie, just a, a question on, but why is it that you think the team performed so well in this season? And, and how do you kind of bottle that so you've got it for every game, that you have that match at level intensity for every match you play? Um, I think obviously going into the game, the first game of the of the group stages, I think we realised that we probably made mistakes and didn't have the perfect games in the in the warm up games. Um, but I think that kind of was the best thing for us because it really allowed us to identify what we needed to work on within the group. Um, and obviously taking that into the the first game against Argentina was huge. Um, unfortunately, we've we played with down numbers a couple of times in, in the warm stages and um, it's not ideal but we really get I think it just shows the character of the group we get behind each other and we um, we push that extra couple of percentages to, to, to take care of the, the man that's not on the field so ideally yeah we, we want to have 15 players on the field but I think this weekend um, we really got behind each other and we just we never stopped throughout the, the, the whole 80 minutes um, and yeah we, we came up the, the right end of the scoreboard and I think that's credit to the team really I don't think um, we gave Argentina a look in um, and it was a proud performance and, and definitely one we want to continue the momentum going into this weekend. Hi Richard, just on the attack, what areas are you kind of trying to fine tune, focus on to maybe cross the line a bit more often and score a few more tries? Yeah, no, there wasn't a huge amount of opportunities. There was three or four that reviewed today in terms of um, took some good edges and didn't make a, enough of them. So tightening up a few little areas, wouldn't like to give too much away in terms of what that, that detail looks like. but. Um, Lads are really grabbing hold of it and making sure that that area of the game is, you say, getting tight all the time. Not ideal without uh, full numbers and um, and we found an advantage somewhere else. So we press that home. We're here, here to win games and and we found the best way to do that at the weekend. Is it a frustration, Ollie, that the backs have scored loads of tries over the last few months? And what are you guys trying to do to, to fix that? Um, I wouldn't say it's a frustration. I think at the end of the day. The main thing for us is we want to win games of rugby, which whichever way that is. Um, as backs, we know that we probably need to step up and we need to try and find those opportunities to, to score tries, and we're working on that constantly throughout training. Um, and I think last week we had a, we had a really good week in training, uh, probably one of our best ones, and we attacked well, we defended well, and um, the game that was on Saturday, like I said, didn't present itself for us to for us to attack in the way we wanted to at times um, but we're working on it in training and we're building each day um, and like I said hopefully it will it'll come come true this weekend Just a slightly random one for you which Love a random one yeah. <laughs> Why are the balls flying further than usual? Have you noticed that? that the yeah. People are kicking it really yeah. far I was, I, was, I was worried when I watched the first game and I saw them kick it from 22 to 22 and I was like oh no you're never going to you're never going to get out um, if you think, think the balls are slightly different they never say that they're, they're ever different but they always are slightly different um, I think big stadiums help for some reason the lack of wind um, so yeah and there's and all the best kickers in the world are on show so <laughs> we've, um, I think we've seen some some guys hit, hit it a long way but um, the two French lads uh, DuPont and Ramos tend to hit the ball a mile it's what it's what they do and George Ford as good a dead ball punter as, you, as you'll see so um, probably not a, an in-depth reason, but slight change of balls and um, I think big stadiums to help. Richard, with Owen Farrell available again next week, just are you able at this stage to start planning for reintegrating him in terms of what you were able to do in training, or are you having to spend every minute of it on the prep for this weekend? Yeah, so um, everyone will make sure that they get reps. Um, we won't run it as um, as completely two separate teams for um, for a number of reasons, but. Um, it will be mainly about Japan um, and we need to make sure training is of a level and a standard that anyone who's not involved is getting enough touches of the ball, um, defending enough stuff that when they come in it isn't a, it isn't a shock to them. So I know Owen does, he's incredibly diligent with his, with his work 
Um, and any team Owen Farrell's in, whether it, the, whether it running as the opposition or not, is competitive and, and he makes sure it's ready to go. So, uh, no, we, t we tend to have two 15s going at it, so um, he's been very much part of that. Yeah, no, I thought they um, the ended up running up a score really well. Obviously, incredibly dangerous with the ball. Uh, difficult conditions because um, it was so warm. So, um, but they're well used to that. So again, the stuff that they're good at in terms of the ball movement, in terms of uh, how they get you. So yeah, we saw all the things that you'd, that you'd expect from a really strong Japanese team. I think 12 of the 2019 team are playing. So. They've got a lot of cohesion, uh, a lot of experience of winning in World Cups, uh, and that definitely showed. Um, Japan have been kind of struggling with the uh, coping against the uh, kicking game. And that's all to help again, kind of strategy yeah. on that. Great insight. You've been watching, you've been watching the games. Um, no, so you've got to play to where the most space is. If the most space is in Japan's backfield, that's where that's where you want to uh, attack. If the most space is in the front line, that's where you want to attack. So um, we know that we've got some world-class kickers. We'll be looking to try and get an advantage in that area, but uh, I'm sure Japan will be coming with their own plan in the in the kicking game. They don't tend to play as much rugby as you might think coming out of their own 22, out of their own half. They tend to be pretty efficient, um, kicking it long from 10. So um, we should be well ready for that.